Barbara Babe Paley was a 20th century socialite, style icon, and one of the famed Fabulous Cushing Sisters. If you've been watching season 2 of Feud, you'll know she was chief among Truman Capote's swans. But what was her life like, and why did he betray her? Join me as we explore her true life story. The woman who would become known to the world as Babe Paley was born as Barbara Cushing in Boston, Massachusetts on the 5th of July 1915. Her father was Harvey Cushing, a neurosurgeon and writer who rose to considerable prominence in the 1910s as a pioneer of brain surgery, and her mother was Catherine Cushing. Barbara had several siblings, but she is most closely associated with her two elder sisters, Mary and Betsy. In 1940, Mary would marry William Vincent Astor, a sign of the enormously wealthy Astor family, while Betsy had two prominent marriages, one to James Roosevelt, the son of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and then a second marriage in 1942 to John Hay Whitney, the US ambassador to Britain and president of the Museum of Modern Art. As we will see shortly, Barbara also married two prominent figures in East Coast society, and as a result of their marriages, wealth, positions as style icons, and their looks, Barbara, Mary and Betsy became known in the 1940s as the Fabulous Cushing Sisters. During her youth, Barbara attended the Westover School, a preparatory school in Connecticut, which is generally attended by children of the upper class of New England and New York. From there she headed to the Windsor School in Boston, which she graduated from in 1934 at 18. This was around the same time that she suffered from a serious accident. Early in 1934, while driving home from a party on Long Island, Barbara was in a major car accident, in which her front teeth were knocked out. As a result, she had to undergo extensive reconstructive surgery around both her mouth and jaw. However, as dental work went in the 1930s, it was a tremendous success, and once the bruises had healed, it was clear that the incident had not diminished her good looks. And if you don't want your good looks to diminish, then you need to be using the UFO3 by today's gracious sponsor, Foreo. I was lucky enough to get my hands on the UFO3 deep facial hydration device a few months ago, and it has definitely made my skin clearer and more hydrated. The UFO3 hydrates your skin and increases skin moisture by 126% in just two minutes. It also reduces the appearance of wrinkles in just one week, and it's more effective than a sheet mask alone in just two minutes. Using it is really easy. Make sure your skin is dry and clean. Remove the attachment ring from the UFO3 and place the mask onto the device and secure it. Turn the UFO3 on by pressing this button and press it again to select a preset treatment. You can also select a specialized treatment from the app and it even has an offline mode. Here I'm selecting the warming thermotherapy that has given me great results and hydration for my skin. Now for the best part, use the UFO3 and massage your face in circular motions until the treatment ends. The UFO3 really is fantastic and rarely on discount, so make sure to make the most of the 30% off you get by using the link in the description, plus an additional 10% discount for the first 50 people that use the coupon code FORGOTTEN10. Now back to the video. In 1938, Barbara, who by her adult years was known to all her friends and acquaintances as Babe, had landed a job with Vogue magazine. Her position gave her access to dresses and clothes designed by some of the most prominent fashion houses in the world, and in due course, she began to garner a reputation for herself as a style icon. Her personal taste was somewhat unconventional, often combining clothes with jewellery and other accessories in an eclectic fashion. Soon, Barbara's style was garnering national attention. In 1941, Time magazine placed her at number two on its list of the world's best-dressed women, 
Coming second only to Wally Simpson, the American socialite who had caused controversy in Britain in the mid-1930s owing to her scandalous relationship with King Edward VIII. It was just the first of many appearances on the time list and many others. Eventually in 1958, she was inducted into the Fashion Hall of Fame after placing on the international best dressed list 14 times. Babe was also well known for her marriages. Shortly after she began working at Vogue, she met Stanley Grafton Mortimer Jr., a sign of the wealthy New York Mortimer family, which had a major stake in the city's real estate business. His maternal grandfather, Henry Morgan Tilford, had also been one of the founding shareholders in Standard Oil, which for a time in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, was the world's most profitable company. After a brief courtship, he and Babe married in East Hampton in New York. Babe and Stanley's marriage quickly resulted in two children, a son named Stanley after his father born in 1942, and a daughter named Amanda. Despite this, the marriage was not a happy one. The cracks within it were disguised for some time in the early to mid 1940s, as Babe was pregnant, and Stanley was generally absent, serving on the Pacific Front during the Second World War. However, shortly after the war ended, and Stanley returned home, they decided to go their separate ways. They divorced in 1946, with Babe receiving a substantial financial settlement. Shortly after her divorce, Babe met William Pasha Paley. William was a broadcaster and businessman who built the Columbia Broadcasting System, or CBS, as it is better known today. Although it started out as a humble radio station, it eventually became one of America's largest television networks, introducing many innovations which revolutionized the face of the media in the United States. He had become wealthy in tandem and had also married Dorothy Hart Hearst in 1932, the former daughter-in-law of William Randolph Hearst, the most powerful media baron of the early 20th century, whom Orson Welles had based Citizen Kane on. When Babe and William first met in 1946, he was still married to Dorothy, but they were estranged from each other. Thus, after a short courtship, Babe and William wished to marry. He eventually finalised his divorce from Dorothy on the 24th of July 1947, and just four days later, Babe and he married. Their union was a mixed affair. Two children followed soon after they were wed, William in 1948, and Kate in 1950. Babe provided the basis for William to break into the high society of the East Coast in the late 1940s, while he brought an unlimited source of funding to affairs. This money allowed for the purchase and development of a number of lavish properties in New York, Long Island, and a country retreat in New Hampshire. Here, Babe held parties attended by some of the former celebrities, writers, artists, and political figures of the time. Additionally, she had an allowance of $160,000 per year, a sum equivalent to around $2 million today, which she used to invest lavishly in jewellery and dresses. Nevertheless, it was also a troubled marriage. William engaged in a string of extramarital affairs, which after a certain point, he made little effort to disguise. For her part, Babe had quit her job at Vogue when she married William, and when the parties ended, it was often a lonely life. Eventually, she too began to engage in affairs. Yet, despite these liaisons and the unhappy nature of their marriage, Babe and William would never divorce, maintaining their union for a variety of social and business reasons. Babe was far from the only high society fashion and style icons of the post-war period, and she had many rivals. None was as fierce as her friendship slash rivalry with Gloria Guinness, a sign of a wealthy and powerful Mexican family which traced its roots all the way back to Christopher Columbus. Between the 1930s and 1950s, she married four times. Like Babe, 
Several of her marriages were to wealthy and prominent individuals, notably her third marriage to a grandson of King Faud I of Egypt, and her fourth to Thomas Leol Guinness, a sign of the Guinness Brewing and Banking Dynasty from Ireland. As a result of their respective marriages and positions as style icons, Babe and Gloria vied for prominence in the pages of America's magazines and newspapers in the 1940s, 50s and 60s. They moved in the same circles and at times could have said to have been friends. But there was also a fierce rivalry between them at the same time. Babe used to spread spurious tales about how Gloria had been a nightclub worker in Mexico before coming to America, while Gloria could be just as petty. On one occasion, she invited Paley to a gathering on her private yacht, informing her that it was a low-key informal affair. When Babe arrived with some modest attire, she found that the soiree was anything but a low-key affair, as Gloria emerged in her finest attire and a small mountain of diamonds. They were frenemies for sure. Accounts of Babe Paley's life have typically depicted her as a neglectful mother to her four children, one who prioritised her social life and status within American high society over raising them in any nurturing fashion. There seems little disputing that this was the case. Her second child from her first marriage, Amanda, who went on to enjoy a successful career as an urban planner in Manhattan and a senior partner at Bloomberg Associates, stated that her relationship with her mother was non-existent and that the distance between them was most certainly owing to her mother's personal decisions. Babe Paley is also well known today owing to her relationship with Truman Capote, the acclaimed author of works such as Breakfast at Tiffany's and In Cold Blood. In the course of the 1950s and 1960s, Capote became one of the most significant figures in American high society. Openly gay, at the time when being so was hazardous in American society, he developed a clique of wealthy attractive female friends, whom he referred to as his swans. Babe was known to be his favourite amongst these, and was one of the prominent attendees at the Black and White Ball, a masquerade ball thrown by Capote in the Plaza Hotel in New York in November 1966, sometimes termed the Party of the Century. The black and white ball was a zenith of Capote and Paley's relationship. Unbeknownst to his swans and many of his other acquaintances, Capote had been working for some time on a new novel entitled Answered Prayers, a depiction of American high society which critiqued many of its characters some of whom were quite obviously based on members of Capote's social circle, Babe included. An unfinished version of the book was only posthumously published in the 1980s, after Capote had died, but a version of the start of the book entitled La Côte Basque 1965 was published by Squire magazine in 1975. This was based on meetings of the characters at the famous Manhattan restaurant La Cote Basque, and presented a heavily satirical view of the people who mixed here. Babe recognised that one of the characters was clearly based on her. When she read it, she decided to completely terminate her relationship with Capote. They never spoke to each other ever again. Indeed, the publication of La Cote Basque 1965 marked the high point of Capote's gradual social suicide. There would be no more swans thereafter. By the time she terminated her relationship with Capote, Paley's health was declining. For many years she had been a heavy smoker, with a habit of up to two packs a day. After years of respiratory problems, she was diagnosed with lung cancer in 1974, just shy of her 60th birthday. In the 1970s, this was effectively a death sentence, as were nearly all cancer diagnoses, unlike today. Babe preserved for four years. In the meantime, she planned the party that would be held for her funeral, and stopped dyeing her hair, and simply let it go grey. She died on the 6th of July 1978, 
at 63 years of age, and after her elaborate funeral, she was buried at St. John's Church in Cold Spring Harbor, New York. Given her marriages, her associations with figures such as Truman Capote, and her status as one of the leading style icons of her time, Barbara Paley has unsurprisingly featured in popular culture on various occasions since. Prominent portrayals of her include those by Michelle Harrison and Sigourney Weaver in the films Capote and Infamous in 2005 and 2006, both of which focused on Capote. She is also portrayed by Naomi Watts in the second series of Feud, directed by Goose Van Sant. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video on Barbara Babe Paley, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of her life down below in the comments, and if you have seen the second season of Feud, or you're watching it, let me know what you thought, and how it compares to her real life. I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them, and if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them down below in the comments. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.